Well, once again, South Carolina finds a way to get it done in the end, and this time they take care of the LSU Tigers at home, winning their third straight game. Mike Eubel alongside me is Colin Taylor, and Colin, the energy today, you heard it from Frank Martin post game to be able to have it. We're going to get into it a little bit with Gigi Jackson being here, but let's start with the game itself. Being able to get this win, being able to going into this, you had five games left in the regular season, and Frank's talked about it. You have to be able to, to look at it in a five-game regular season sense and find a way to just finish strong. They're still in the mix. They're still in the mix right now to be able to make some type of postseason play. Yeah, now, granted, is this win going to put you into the tournament? No. Is this win – is it great? Absolutely. But you still have work to do. Um, this is better than the alternative. It's a great win. It's a quad one win. You're going in the right direction, and that's the important thing. And um, I don't think enough can be said about the toughness they played with, about the intensity they played with. And when South Carolina does those things, the results tend to follow. And um, it's they've done it in the past, and you saw what that can be today. And I think this was – from start to finish, for the most part, probably their most complete game in SEC play. And 20 turnovers, and, and Frank mentioned it after the game, that things like that will happen against a talented team like LSU, especially how good they are defensively. Now, with that being said, were some of those turnovers that occurred were, you know, those dumb mistakes at times? Yes, absolutely. It wasn't perfect by any means, but some of the things that I took away from it, free throw shooting outside of the last 20 <laughs> seconds, right. uh, they, they were phenomenal today, but they were uh, 16 of 18 before those final 20 seconds. They did better on that end. Uh, something else that was impressive was Jermaine Kuznar. 33 points, which was the most points by a Gamecock since that 2017 season. So when I when you see stuff like that, it has to make you feel good. South Carolina is 14-2 and two now when either Kuznar or Keyshawn Bryant scores at least 10 points or more. What what does that tell you when you hear a stat like that? It says just how important they are to this team. Um, when you get good minutes from Jermaine, when you get good minutes from Key, and, and Key wasn't great offensively today. He was solid defensively and especially in the rebounding area. When you get production from those guys, the guys you built this roster around, really, the backbone of that group, um, you tend to have success. They're older guys. Both of them are in the fourth year in the program. Kusner, obviously, third year actually playing. But you you see the talent you see why frank martin was high on them have they put it together at times no they still have plenty of work to do but you saw why frank martin was optimistic about what this group could be when you see jermaine do what he did today when you see Keyshawn have good moments um and let's not i mean jermaine kustarn's mom who's been battling cancer was at the game today and that was just an awesome awesome moment for him so you look at the schedule next game up mississippi state now it's a four game regular season schedule Bottom line is that he'd be able to find a way to just get these wins one game at a time. Is it going to be as simple as that, though, or do you need to be able to get some type of style points when you're looking at it? And I know, you know, not trying to create popsicle headaches here, but there's going to be a lot of people. You you mentioned it before we came on air. LSU going into this game was ranked 16 in net. You don't think that a win like this is going to shoot South Carolina up tremendously. It'll help, but what do they need to do other than just win, or is it as simple as just win, 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 win? I mean, winning helps, uh, style points helps, being more efficient um, helps, which is factored into both Ken Palm and the net rankings. Mm -hmm. That helps, uh, but you just got to win. Um, I think Mississippi State would be a quad two win, if I'm not mistaken. Missouri would be quad three. Alabama would be, I believe, quad one. And Auburn would be quad one. So you, there are opportunities on the schedule to build a resume. You just got to win those games, and you have to do it you know, efficiently to really move up in it. They're going to move up. It's just a matter of how much. And if at the end of the day, you just got to keep winning. Do you see any wiggle room? I mean, Auburn goes down against Florida. They actually have not been able to win in Florida since 1996. How about that? Auburn just, despite the season that they're having, just still has no answer when they're in Gainesville. Do they have to win on out to be able to think about being able to make the NCAA tournament? We know that they're going to have to be able to get some things done in the SEC tournament. Do they need to? Is there any wiggle room, though? Can they lose one, even, dare I say, two games? You can't lose two. Um, I think you're expected to lose to Auburn just from a, you know, the percentage standpoint and what Auburn is this year. But um, maybe one. Um, but even then, you're probably looking at the NIT unless you go on some miraculous run in the SEC tournament. So um, winning out certainly helps. I think that would put them at 11 and – seven in the league if they end up doing that so obviously 10 and 8 is good um, would like to be better but if you win some in the tournament you get to a friday or saturday who knows but um you just need to win at this point and let the chips fall where they may um 
you you've not you, you don't control your own destiny for lack of a better word from the tournament's eyes but you control your own destiny of what you do in these last four games and i think that's the way south carolina needs to approach it just a quick math check i mean i was not good at math by any means you already know that but uh if they win three of the next four games that'll put them to finish at Ten and eight. Um, if they lose, if they lose that last one to Auburn, uh, Gigi Jackson in attendance today, sitting right behind Frank Martin. As you see, the man right there, right behind the bench, he was all smiles for most of the game, and we alluded to it on the Insiders Forum. Some of the details that went into this visit, and we're going to continue to update it as we are able to gather more information. South Carolina is throwing everything they can at him. And look, it, Frank's talked about it before. I understand the frustration when there's certain players that South Carolina has not been able to get in the past couple of years locally, but they have been able to keep some very talented players locally here in the state, here in Columbia at that, and Gigi's obviously one of those. How do you assess how things have gone overall uh, in terms of South Carolina trying to put their best foot forward and, you know, here in the student section, you know, we want Gigi. Just your overall assessment on the day. I don't think South Carolina could have done more. Uh, today in the recruitment process as a whole, um, they've really kind of thrown the kitchen sink at him, and he's been really receptive to the you know potential of staying home. He wouldn't have taken an official if he didn't. Um, he really has a his fam him and his family both have solid relationships with Frank Martin and and that staff and Chuck Martin. So um, that has certainly helped. And then having what you had here today with the atmosphere you had, winning uh, against a really good team and playing the way you did, and having the th this was a fun basketball game, and and doing that with that atmosphere can only help um, in recruiting and it's just a matter of can South Carolina, they've been in the game with a lot of these guys um, of late, obviously you know they've landed some, but can they get over the hump and beat a North Carolina or a Duke for a guy like Gigi Jackson? And right now I think the staff feels good. You never know until the guy says I'm committed and, and signs the paperwork, but um, I think they feel good about where they are right now as they sit here two days into a three-day official visit. Is there anything more they can do in terms of what they can control? Obviously, there's factors that you're not going to be able to control. NIL, if you want to call it the, the open market, if you will. We know North Carolina's in the mix as well to be able to land Gigi. Is there anything more in your eyes that South Carolina can do? And does a win like this, look, we know it doesn't hurt, but can this be the difference maker when it comes down to you know making that decision? <sighs> Any more they can do, just stay the course, keep going the way they're going, and, and keep selling you know, family, staying home, because I think that's really something he's latched onto in that regard um, with Frank Martin, with you know the staff. One game isn't going to decide a recruitment at the end of the day. Um, obviously, it helps to win. The atmosphere helps, but um, play style is going to be a big factor. Um, potential to you know obviously go to the next level because he has an NBA talent. Um, it's just a matter of staying the course and, and keep recruiting him. And, but certainly, I think today helped. And right behind us, I mean, it's been a busy weekend here in South Carolina. Opening weekend for baseball. Unfortunately, the Gamecocks were not able to find a way. They rallied back late, Colin. Yeah. They did rally back late. Uh, I mean, shoot, might as well have you. I know, I know you were on basketball duty today. Um, Two games in, one and one. If they're able to be able to get the sweep. Is it a successful weekend in your eyes? You know, some people, one game, all right, season's over, you know, this and that. But um, how would you assess the opening weekend if they're able to get that win tomorrow? Hey, if, if you win the series, that's good. With so many new faces, you're going to have some growing pains. So they got to figure it out, and they showed some fight today, and now it's just a matter of staying the course and figuring things out and finding the right pieces to play at the right time and seeing where it goes from there. Now, Colin will be over at Founders Park tomorrow as the Gamecocks try to take that rubber match. I'll be here with uh, Chris Wellbaum. We'll be covering women's basketball. And as you can see behind me, they're actually setting up for college game day. So that is the corner where college game day is going to take part. Just the second time in 11 years, the first time in 11 years, excuse me, that this has took part. The second time this season that a women's basketball game will air on ABC. A tremendous opportunity to not only promote um, women's basketball, but as well as the university. Don Staley, the players that they have, Aaliyah Boston, she's on the bubble, of course, of, of, of trying to win that Naismith Trophy Player of the Year award. What do you expect tomorrow in terms of just an environment? Because Tennessee, it's, eh, the, the lust has lost a little bit, you know? Yeah. They've lost four of their last seven games, but at the end of the day, that's it's still Tennessee. It's still a name. Um, you're going to have college game day here. It's going to be a fantastic environment for college basketball in Columbia, and got a chance if you win to be able to hang another one of these banners up here. Is, you know, I think they would at least guarantee a share of the SEC title. So um, anytime you're playing for a banner, it's a good thing.
And you mentioned that banner, right? And if they are able to take care of Tennessee tomorrow, they will secure the number one seed in the SEC tournament, which obviously doesn't hurt. I mean, it's going to be a little bit different. They're not going to be going up right up the street to Greenville. They're going to be heading out to Nashville, where uh, our good friend Patrick Davis is, who, uh, of course, got a big concert coming up during the day of the spring football game. But he's Colin Taylor. I'm Mike Yuva reporting from Colonial Life Arena. Be sure to keep it locked in to GamecockCentral.com for all your Gamecock news.